Hello, I'm Nick Luck. And I'm Rosie Tapner. And together we'll be presenting coverage of this year's Burley Horse Trials, streamed live and exclusive over five days on Burley TV. Yes, for just £20, a Burley TV subscription will give you an Access All Areas Pass to the heart of the action. From the very first horse inspection to the final trophy lift and so much more. Our five-star event coverage includes exclusive previews, live interviews, expert analysis, behind-the-scenes content, celebrity guests and masterclasses with Carl Hester and Yogi Breisner. And when the event coverage stops, we keep going. Hosting an evening highlight show today at Burley, where we will review the best of the day's action with studio guests as well as taking a look at what else has gone on around the event. And if that wasn't enough, on Friday you'll be able to watch live coverage of the Dubarry Burley Young Event Horse Final. All this direct to your laptop, tablet or TV for just £20. So don't miss out. Head to the Burley website and subscribe today. See, See you there. there. Well, this is the moment. It's one we all want to win. Got his ears pricked, the horse looking for the next fence. Now on to one of the biggest fences in the world, the Cotsmore Leap. Gutsy through there, the near Camera. This for the title. She's done it. Piggy March and Vanier Camera have taken Burley. Nicholson and Avery have pulled it off. Now this is the fence that could cause problem. And there it is, a record-breaking sixth Burley title for William Fox Pitt. One more to go for Tim Price and Ringwood Skyboy to take the Land Rover Burley title, and they will do that. It takes a very unique horse. But the champion of Burley for 2003 and the Rolex Grand Slam winner is Pippa Funnel. We cannot underestimate how special this is. Welcome to the Ac Ratings Eventing Podcast and listeners, the Inside Burley Review Show, because this weekend it was the Defender Burley Horse Trials for 2023. What a weekend. I don't know about you, but I'm absolutely flattened the burly bus has run me over a couple of times reverse back again um and i'm sort of still clinging on but my goodness me it was just an incredible weekend of sport the sun shone which to be honest was the the icing on the cake um given this year's eventing and it was a, an eventful final day as well so we are going to chat through everything that unfolded on the final day of burley but before we do so we have got a very special guest Arguably, it was a result of his career so far at Burley this weekend. He became only the ninth person to finish on his dress card score at Burley since 2008. So in the last 15 years, it is an incredibly difficult thing to do. David Dole, how are you feeling sort of 48 hours later? <laughs> hey, Nicole. Um, yeah, no, still, still absolutely buzzing. Um, we had yeah an absolutely fantastic weekend at Burley. I have to say, definitely can't complain about that one. No, and it's the stuff that dreams are made of. I mean, it was an incredible one. And um, going into Burley weekend, obviously you have been picking up some really good five star results with Galileo and Newmont, but the horse had never been to Burley before. You'd only been once before. What was the hope? What was the expectation this time last week? Um, we did a sort of aimed for a top ten placing. Um, so and I think I, I know I joked in the press conference, you know, he he'd come sort of fourth, six and eighth, um, so far in his five stars, so uh, he either had to come second or tenth. But um but yeah, no, it was definitely I, I sort of thought top ten placing was definitely was realistic aim. From from the start of the week, how did it all feel? Because Burley is one of those events, isn't it, that I guess is really on a rider's bucket list. You've been there before, but only the once. So how was kind of the start of the Burley experience for you? Because, I mean, it's been a couple of years. Was it 2018? You had a great horse called Shannondale Quest who you went on. Yeah, yeah. I think, actually, I think this might have been 2019. 
Um, and yeah, okay. Sunday Quest, so Sunday Quest was a bit of an oil tanker. Um, and, um, he was a bit of a big lad and, um, he just basically had to put him on a line and hoped you stayed on that line. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, taking Galileo Noi Mode was a little bit of a different experience. Um, I think, uh, sort of like last time I went round Burley, I aimed to get about 20, 30 time faults. Um, whereas this time the aim was to have no time faults. So, yeah, so no, the actual sort of the riding experience was quite different. Um, but uh, Burley has such a great feel to it. and. You know, we've been up in the past for the young horse classes and I've been up to watch as well. Um, and yeah, it fairly has this sort of, it's like a little bit of sort of end of season feel to it. Yeah, it was really cool to be, uh, be up there again. Let, let's start with the dressage. How pleased yeah. with the, were you with your test? Because actually you had a very early draw on Thursday morning. 33.7 was the score that you put on the, the scoreboard. What were your thoughts after the first phase? Yeah, I was sort of, actually, I was a little bit sort of frustrated because I felt he actually did one of his best tests um, and wasn't really sort of rewarded for that. He had two flying changes right at the end that weren't sort of quite perfect. But other than that, um, you know, sort of like, as I said, it was probably one of his best tests and he was going probably the best he's gone for a long time. Um, so, yeah, I think there was a little bit of frustration more just with the mark um, than anything else because, yeah, I couldn't have been sort of... Re- Sort of upset with him at all because, as I said, you know, sort of like he had, yeah, you know, done one of his best tests. He did what he needed to do. Um, yeah. The the cross country, actually, the the course that you jumped earlier in the year in Kentucky was a Derek Grazia track, and obviously, it's the second year Derek was designing Burley. What did you make of it? And when you first walked it, what was the feeling? Did you think this is this is a course that will suit us? This is a course that we we can go inside the time on at Burley, which is a tough old thing to do. Um, yeah, I sort of thought a little bit of a fiddly track actually, and I, I sort of I couldn't quite get my head into it, um, and I sort of struggled with it a bit. Um, yeah, I walked it sort of four, maybe nearly you know, five times, um, just trying to sort of get the gist of it a little bit. And it was definitely really useful having been around Kentucky in the spring, but I sort of felt that Derek really got you know, get Kentucky and I know he's built there for a little while now and um the undulations that are there, sort of his fence placement was yeah, you know, was sort of spot on, whereas I don't know, sort of Burley just didn't he it just didn't quite feel like he'd quite got some of the fences in the right place. To me it just sort of some of the fences he looked at and went, Oh, this is a little bit of a an odd choice of a bit of placement and you know, some of his turns and I know he likes these sort of quite sharp sort of 45 degree 90 degree turns back in on yourself a little bit and um and that's fine but yeah I think where where he placed a few of them I'm not sure it sort of it probably was quite right but hey look you know sort of like it, it produced a, a great sort of great competition and a pretty decent result. The feeling on Saturday morning at a five star is always quite um I don't know there, there's a real anticipation there's a real buzz in the air. It's quite unique. It's quite special, particularly yep. when you've got one of the big ones. And yep. actually, for you going out on course quite early, did you did you like going out early, or was that a little bit different? Yeah, no, I I, I liked going out early. You know, sort of like he then <laughs> sounds really silly. You then don't have to listen to everyone else's opinions, um, and you can just go. Out. <laughs> You can just go out and do your own thing and get on with it. And yeah, you know, sort of like it was probably a little bit frustrating. Galileo was on early um, on for the dressage sense. But actually, no, it was great just to be able to get out there and jump around with our, you know, with our plan that we had and prove that, you know, sort of like it was sort of nice and nice and easy to jump around. Did it certainly looked nice and easy to jump around. I know that it gave a lot of the other riders watching on, um, a lot of confidence there there was your round and Will's Oakden's round at the, ended up being the only two inside the time and they seemed to be a sort of a collective breath in the riders tent of going right okay it's achievable it's doable they've made it look very straightforward did your round feel as flawless as it looked or were there any moments that actually you do have to revert to plan b or, or kind of change your sort of game plan slightly because that's cross-country riding um, yeah, no, didn't have to change the plan at all, but I did, I had one little moment where he actually just fell through the back of the, um, the ditch and brush a little bit, just on the way down the hill after the dairy mound. 
and I saw a bit of a flyer and, and he was great and a really good boy and he picked up really nicely to it but sort of just fell through the back of it a bit. Talk us through that final half a kilometre of the Burley Cross Country Course when you're up on the clock, David, and you've jumped all the fences so far, you've just got to get home. What goes through your mind at that point? Yeah, I, I knew sort of like, you know, I would have at least sort of a good five seconds under time. Yeah, I was there just sort of, it sounds really bad. Uh, I can remember Ollie Townend, you know, sort of like chasing the clock at the end of last year and he had his ball to the food from home. So, uh, you know, I sort of had that in my head a little bit. So it was a definite, uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't have a misser here. Yeah, I mean, coming home, knowing that you're, you're on the clock and actually you've just got to jump those last couple of fences. You come through the finish. You obviously, the team are very quickly on hand to um, make sure that the horse is looked after and you've got to go off and do your interviews and press and everything like that. I imagine that news filtered through that Wills had also made the time. At that point, did you think, okay, other people are going to make it as well? Or did you think, no, do you know what? We did it all out there and it is harder than people think it is right now. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of a difficult one because Galileo just makes, yeah, it makes it feel quite so easy. And I always feel a little bit guilty about this. And, um, you know, sort of like a lot of people sort of chat about how sort of slow I look because he's almost just quite so smooth in um, in his sort of way of going. He's got this lovely big stride. Um, and so I sort of find it really difficult to gauge at the moment. You know, sort of he, he gives me such a lovely feel. And, you know, he's got such a lovely sort of scopey jump as well that... Um, I just sort of feel, it just feels like I'm just having a nice canter around, really. Um, and I feel sort of slightly guilty about that. And, you know, sort of like it was like when he jumped around Kentucky and he was about 19, I think about 19 seconds under time. And, you know, I think he was about nine seconds under time here at Burley last weekend. And, um, you know, and it, you just actually, it just makes it feel just quite so easy. So, yeah, I, I always find it a little bit of a hard one to gauge. Um, I mean, Will Oakden is an absolutely, you know, sort of another really class um, cross, cross country rider as well. Um, but yeah, there was part of me that thought there would obviously be, or was going to be, a few more um, inside the time than there actually were. Um, I know Sam came, you know, pretty close to uh, to achieving it. Um, but yeah, no, I was definitely sort of surprised that there weren't weren't any others. Sam's one second, I think, is going to haunt him for for a while <laughs> because it's so frustratingly close. Um, can I ask? Obviously, you know he he's actually now been inside the time at a good number uh, of five stars. I mean, to be sixteen seconds or so inside the time at Kentucky or whatever it was, and you know I think he was the fastest of the day in Kentucky, and then obviously nine seconds inside at Burley on a tough, tough day. He's really fast. He's got great stamina and is very rideable and, and can achieve those quick times. What have you done with your fitness regime over the last couple of years? And and I know we've spoken about it on the, the podcast previously in terms of the, the kind of things that you tweaked and changed after his step up to five star where he didn't quite have enough left in the tank. What have you done? What has been the secret to the success? Because it is absolutely 100% obviously working. Um, yeah, I think we just did a little bit more variety with his galloping work. Um, I was just mainly predominantly doing sort of a lot of hill work with him. Um, and so we just introduced a little bit more sort of interval work, um, and sort of slightly longer, um, longer, but sort of still fairly intense sort of canters, um, you know, where we're building up to sort of him doing sort of repetitions of, um, just before his, you know, his last canter before his five stars, he's then sort of cantering for nine minutes, having sort of a minute and a half break and then another nine minutes and then a minute and a half break and then, you know, sort of cantering for another sort of nine minutes. Um, you know, sort of like there's a lot of sort of build up to that sort of stage, but actually, you know, half an hour of actually pretty solid cantering and the field that I canter in at home, um, you know, I'm very lucky to be able to have some decent fields on the farm at home to be able to use. You know, this hill's got quite a decent slope on it as well. And he'd be cantering at sort of probably just above novice sort of speed. And that was, I think, one of the main things, you know, we looked at what was he actually struggling with. And that was more sort of the stamina side of it for him. Um, and so these big long canters what were what we, you know, sort of tried to sort of build into his, his fitness program and, and to introduce in that little bit more. So, yeah, I think that was probably, the, you know, the, the main part to it, really. And um, I do a lot of work with Nick Turner. And, um, you know, sort of like after he 
Galileo had run out of puff at Bixton. Um, you know, Nick asked me the simple question of, you know, when I do my canter work, does you know, does Galileo, does the horse ever actually feel tired? Um, and you know, sort of like I, and I sort of thought back to all my canters, and I sort of went, well, no, not really. And um, I think sort of part of that was actually teaching him that even when he's tired, he can keep going. Um, you know, it just sort of felt a little bit that when he when he ran out of puff at Bicton, he just didn't know how to sort of dig deep. And I know, you know, a lot of people chat about their horses sort of digging deep for them. And I think he just hadn't really learned what to actually do and how to actually cope with, um, you know, with getting tired and and to, to learn just to keep on cantering and galloping. It's an interesting one, isn't it? You know, when horses step up to five star for the first time, it's a, a proper, proper stamina test and it's the first time plenty of them have really done an 11 to 12 minute track um and it is different to the four star long and they, they do come on from it and you learn a lot from them as well saturday night third place after cross country what was the feeling like in team dole knowing that you are sat on generally speaking pretty good jumper he was definitely the best jumper inside the top five <laughs> um yeah, I, I think um, yeah, we obviously you know, he, he was obviously being eyed quite a bit. We had some fluids, um, to make sure he was sort of nice and well hydrated. And um, I think sort of Saturday night was all about making sure you know he was going to come out Sunday morning feeling as fresh and as perky you know as he possibly can be, and that we can give him the opportunity to to be feeling like that. And you know, and I, I was dead chuffed on Sunday morning when he sort of you know came to the trot up and he. And he pulled my arms out up and down the trot up strip. Um, you know, he, he looked he looked absolute picture. And Lucy, who was grooming for me last week, you know, did a fantastic job. Yeah, I, I would always say he wouldn't be. Uh, I would never get have him as a guaranteed clear round jumping horse. I always think I, you know, I always have seemed to have one lucky moment. Um, I'd, I'd sort of always class him a little bit as a four falter, really, um, in my mind, because you know, so sort of like he always just seems to have a bit of a rub here or there. So, um, but we, we had our plan, and again, you know, Nick Turner was there in the show jumping warm up for me on Sunday afternoon, and you know, we've got his warm up routine. We have his plan of what we do, um, and you know, it's it's been great this year. The, the warm up routine and the plan has, has worked treat. He, um, I have to admit, so we did a uh, little kind of Q and A in the Defender Hospitality on Sunday lunchtime with um harry mead as well and david i felt really bad because i'm not going to lie you were both in great positions going into the jumping and there was a, a really lovely audience listeners and i basically just felt like i was piling on the pressure of going so what's the plan for this afternoon how are the nerves did it feel like a really long old day on sunday because there's a bit of a wait if you if you're one of the last to go yeah, I sort of thought it was going to, and then um, by the time I'd actually sort of, you know, by the time we actually got up and trotted him up, um, I then actually rode him um, in the morning after trot up, which we, you know, sort of, which I nearly always do. Uh, we just did a few little poles and things, and just made sure that you know the canter was sort of back a little bit round, having galloped the day before, um, and then I, I popped up actually because I had a little bit of time. Um, I popped up and saw some of my sponsors, which was quite nice, um, because I, you know, I hadn't really had much of a chance um, in the the other few days to to go and see them. Um, and then, yeah, it, to be fair, actually, it sort of flew by because uh, I went and did uh, we went and did our chat with uh, Defender, with Harry and yourself, and and then I actually was very lucky. I won the Avebury Award for um, the sort of one of the the best cross country rounds. So I had to go and pick that up sort of straight away afterwards after the defender chat. So um, by the time I'd sort of done all of that, it was almost a little bit of a rush to actually get back to the stables and, and get get on board and come back up. So yeah, no, it, it wasn't. It didn't drag on too badly in the end. You were very modest because actually, you say the Avery Trophy is for one of the best cross country rounds. It is judged as the best cross country round of the day. Um, Nicola Wilson and Mandy Stibby judged it this year but I mean that's a huge accolade and actually I imagine is the one that made you really quite proud yeah absolutely um massively and it was just lovely I think more um from a horse Galileo you know for, for him to have that sort of recognition was absolutely fantastic you know because he he, yeah, he was absolutely class um and, and I've had some fantastic rides on him this year um and, and last year 
Um, so, you know, sort of, I think to be recognized as, you know, sort of the best cross country, you know, round ride of the day was, um, was really special. There was a really funny moment that actually I was talking to the lovely Lucy Jackson at the Celebrity Talk area. And next thing I know, I'm being heckled by David Dole, who's on his way. I think you were probably up at the trade stands with your sponsor at that point, David, uh, but obviously in very good spirits going into the afternoon's jumping. Talk to me about the show jumping, because you go in, you jump a clear round, that feeling then of knowing that you are guaranteed a podium place at Burley, one of the most incredible events in the whole wide world, kind of a real highlight of your career so far. What what does that feel like at that moment? I think a little bit of a sense of relief, yeah, for, for sure. Um, you know, sort of like to actually to jump a clear round on the last day, you know, to have to be able to produce the horse, to be able to do that. Um, is a massive team effort. So, you know, sort of like, not that I sort of feel that it's letting everyone down, but, you know, it's sort of like, um, everyone's put so much effort in and Spike the Vet came up as well, um, because he looked after him at home and things. And, um, you know, Sam the physio been treating him all week and things. And, um, so, you know, there was so much sort of involved in trying to get him and I to perform as well as we can do. And, um, yeah, I think so a little bit of relief that, you know, we did achieve, achieve that and keep ourselves in that, in that position. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, it was very exciting. I was really lucky to, um, you know, sort of out in Poe last year, we we're actually in the lead at the t- time. And so sort of, I've, I've sort of experienced that little bit of what it's like as the, as the collecting ring starts to empty. And it's a little bit of a weird feeling when, you know, sort of suddenly it goes from 15 horses in the ring to 10 to five. And suddenly, you know, there's only sort of a handful of you left in there. And um, I, it was quite cool, you know, when you've literally just got sort of Oliver Townend and Tim Price there sort of warming up beside you. And that's what it sort of, yeah, I think got a little bit real that, uh, yeah, that there was a, possibly a little bit of pressure on as well. It's a pretty cool group to be to be a part of. Um, and kind of then to be able to say, right, I've done my bit, I've put the pressure on up to them now and what will be will be as you look back on it now and you kind of reflect on everything over the past week is there a moment that stands out for you as as a real highlight i i think possibly yeah, when it sounds really bad i mean second place it was obviously amazing but i think to have that avery award and to have that sort of recognition um of the you know sort of from the cross country was you know so was was something very special as well so and i sort of felt that that was a little bit of you know sort of the horse earning quite a bit of respect that day and so yeah that was probably sort of one of one of the real highlights um i mean you know sort of you can't beat sort of standing on the podium there you know that, that's an absolute buzz that you know at the end at prize giving for sure but yeah, I, I think probably sort of getting that award on you know, Sunday lunchtime was yeah definitely sort of one of the real highlights. I think that's a very fair real highlight to be honest. Um, lots to look forward to. Obviously, we've we've got a I'm sure it's a busy end of the season for you, and then kind of heading into next year. What is the plan in terms of, of Team Dole in so much as the rest of 2023? I'm presuming that Galileo is off on a, a lovely holiday. Um, eating lots and lots and lots of Dr. Green grass. So, what's the plan for the rest of the team? Yeah, we've got um, sort of actually sort of quite a busy rest of September coming up. Um, we've got, I think, pretty much the whole rest of the yard uh, either competing at Cornbury or West Wilts this coming weekend. Um, and then we've got a little trip to Varsaveld in Holland. Um, as well in about two weeks' time um, because we've got some great supporters um, and owners out there so you know they can then be able to see their horses have a run out there, which would be good fun. Um, and then we've got a couple of horses stepping up at the end of September, going to go do their first advance at Little Downham, which is always sort of one of those slightly sort of nervous, sort of slightly unknown sort of times you know, when you're stepping these horses up. Um, you, know, you obviously want them to always do as well as they can do, but it's that little bit of unknown coming into it. And then, yeah, I think the majority of them are actually going to finish sort of after that sort of end of September time. Um, and then we've just got some youngsters that will sort of keep on going through probably till the end of October. So sort of September is really busy and then it starts to sort of um, quieten down a little bit in October. Um, probably ready just to start getting ready really for, for 2024. 
And dare I ask, 2024, have you got a target in mind as to what you might like to do with Galileo? Yeah, so I, I think we'll almost certainly go back to badminton. It was obviously sixth there last year. So, you know, another sort of top five placing for him would be, um, you know, sort of definitely one of the aims. So I think that will be, you know, his sort of his spring aim. And, um, you know, and then we'll probably just sort of wait and see after that, really. Watch this space. Surely the hand has gone up for Paris. David, you don't have to say anything, but if it wasn't already up beforehand, <laughs> it's now waving about a good bit as well, waving a flag even. Um, you're quite a tall chap, so I would like to think it might be seen. Look, there's a, there's a, it's a tough old time to be part of the British team, but there's a Absolutely. lot to look forward to, and you've certainly done everything that you can this weekend to put yourself well in contention. I think the main thing is enjoy the moment, enjoy the celebrations. It was an absolutely incredible five days for you and the team and I think the one thing that stood out for me was actually when you talk to people about their highlights and kind of the moments that stood out for them you feature in so many um that that really does kind of speak volumes about the week itself so look thank you very much for talking to us and and congratulations again on a brilliant result lovely to have a lovely to have another chat again Listeners, I will just give you a little insight into a little secret. David's patience is quite frankly exceptional because uh, my four, nearly five-year-old starts school tomorrow and is beside himself with excitement. And I'm actually at home today and he keeps jumping into the room shouting boo. So (laughs) we've had to restart a couple of times. Um, David, thank you very much and uh, best of luck for the rest of the season. No, Great to have you in chat. Thanks, Nicole. I loved hearing from David Dole. I don't think I could be more delighted for him. I just absolutely thrilled. I think he'll be chuffed a bits with his result, obviously, but actually it's a bit of a platform as to, to what next. You know, four top tens at five star, getting better and better. You can't ignore that sort of performance. So fingers crossed for him. Uh, look forward to what might come in 2024. Now, Rosie Russell is with me. Rosie, first of all, sum up Burley for you this year. Well, it was one of those competitions that I think was electric from start to finish because I think that Burley has this buzz. If you were there anyway, you would understand that it's probably one of a more relaxed five stars, yet still has this anticipation and buzz about it. And I think it really emphasised that this year. But I absolutely love Burley. I think it was an extraordinary competition. And I think that especially the the cross-country was fantastic because it was one of those courses that caused issues there was trouble but it was designed in such a way that it, there was no real fence that caused the issues obviously the leaf pit was one probably more than others but they were scattered about the course and we said about it before how the first two David and, and Wills went out and made the time and we were a bit like oh you know is it going to be an easy time and then all of a sudden nobody else could make it so I think it was a real roller coaster weekend but in a good way if you know what I mean it's funny isn't it how those first few horses out on cross country set the tone for the roller coaster is it a kind of a white knuckle ride where we all feel like we've been through the mill and it's really stressful or is it kind of a a brilliant roller coaster with lots of twists and turns but actually you feel the thrill of it it's really interesting how much it influences the rest of the competition now we've actually done listeners quite a lot of analysis um, on each of the phases on the the diary show so go and give those a listen we'll link them in the show notes to this show as well but Rosie I wanted to ask you about the final day Tim Price was the leader going into the final day we obviously sat down on Saturday night and kind of had a good chat with Sam and Dee and I guess really reflected on what might happen on the Sunday I think it is fair to say that actually Dee is going to be quite pleased with himself because actually, he called it pretty much perfectly that Tim Price would have three down, Ballamore Class would have one down and win, David Dole would jump clear, and Harry Mead would jump clear. And that's what happened. It's rare that he gets it right, like, all right. Um, so I think we've got to give him a huge amount of credit for that. 100%. It's like he had a little crystal ball that weekend and kind of predicted everything that was going to happen. No, he was he was spot on, to be honest. And he said that there would be a lot of polls down in that final session and that there would be a bit of a juggle and he was exactly right like you say and I think that you know he highlighted Cavalier Crystal as being such an awesome jumper 100% right and what a five-star debut there. 
I'd love to think that that D highlighted Cavalier Crystal as a, a great jumper because I gave him a little elbow in the ribs. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, D. Um, can we talk for just a second about Sam? Because SAP Talisman, he had four down. It would have been amazing to have the, the sort of the dream top 10 finish, but actually a top 15 finish for Sam at Burley. Fantastic result, his best Burley finish. Um, so even though it is kind of a bit of what could have been, actually, the horse's show jumping isn't isn't his favourite phase. And, you know, we really saw the best of him on Saturday over Derek's track when he was only one second over the time. So, Sam, we're very, very proud of you this week. And we are completely thrilled that it all came to fruition, even if a couple of rails went on the last day. Um, right. The last day, the roller coaster of the, the show jumping, I think for me, a couple of the, the kind of early moments of emotion, Alice Casburn actually jumping a clear round. Um, I had a chat with her walking the course in the morning and she said that actually the pressure she'd felt coming into this burley was was quite significantly more um, to, to previous events and they'd just taken the pressure off and her and Spin were just going to enjoy the weekend, enjoy the weekend as a partnership. And that was exactly what they did. And interestingly, I actually had a chat with her about the um, slight long route she took up at Rolex on the cross country, which cost her a few seconds. And she said, that sometimes when he's been galloping for a long period, turning him becomes a little bit trickier. And she said all of the lines, which is completely true, had been pretty straight. And she wanted the opportunity to actually give him a bit of a a sort of a turn before she would then later come to the dairy mound and a couple of the other questions that were coming up later on. So it, it paid off for her and she put in a really good clear round in the show. I mean, it was quite funny because he spooked at something going in and nearly dumped her, I think, before it started. Um, and she said, I always know he's going to jump well when he tries to ditch me before before the bell goes. Um, so, yeah, she ended up in, in eventual. I think she was in seventh after all, which was, was a great result for her. Um, Harry Mead's Cavalier Crystal, Rosie, who jumped, you know, one of the first big clear rounds of the top ten. That mare, I have to admit, you know, she's a five-star first-timer. She stepped up this weekend. I was super impressed. She really did. She looked absolute class throughout the whole weekend. And I think, you know, Harry obviously knew that she was coming in here with the potential to to go and perform. But I think that maybe he was even, not surprised, but impressed with how much she stepped up to the game. Because Burley is a first five-star as well. It's a it's a good first five-star so um, it's, a, it's a strong one for her to tackle and she just ate it up, you know, 32.2 her dressage score. And she did only have 5.2 time cross country, which again, over the burly undulations was very, very good. And to come out and jump as well as she did on that final day, I think he's absolutely thrilled. She pinged round on the final day. She she was so athletic, um, very careful. I think Harry would also uh, have to be a special mention for away cruising, who had the first, I think, the first cross-country jumping penalties of his career on the cross-country on Saturday um, internationally when he missed a flag and Harry came around and represented. And actually, he did jump the fence, just the wider part of it, and didn't feel that he'd gone inside the fence, he hadn't gone outside the the fence as dimensions as such. Um, but he came in and jumped around in the morning for a single time fault, which for, for the team was, I think, you know, just as big a thrill because he's been with them for years and actually show jumping has had the odd rail so they were absolutely delighted with him um harry mead i think this year has been riding better than ever and looking forward to seeing actually what what might happen um wills oakden ended up with two inside the top 10 so big old shout out to wills as well um as did boyd martin but wills just had a, a pull down a piece on each of his david doll's clear round probably gathered listeners we're going in reverse order here because david doll's clear round um it was interesting, David, actually saying that he felt the horse was more of a four falter because actually can have a rub, can have a pull down, but it's generally speaking a good jumper. And I think actually to finish on your dressage score at Burley, we can't underestimate that. I think it was 975 starters since 2008 and only nine of them now have finished on their dressage score. I mean, that is an incredible, incredible achievement. Um, so what, that's 1% of people can do it. You know, massive, massive hats off to him. Um, Rosie, Oliver Town ends round. Ballamore class. Uh, it's The show jumping has been a, a point in the past whereby, you know, he's always very much under fire at five star and he's always in the mix at the business end. What did you make of his round? I thought it was a great round. I mean, it was just that last fence that went for him. Um, he was so close to that 
that clear round. But I think it was a classy round. It was more emotional, I think, when he came out and you could see how much that horse meant to him when he knew that he'd won when uh, Tim had knocked down. I think he had one fence in hand. He had one fence in hand. And yeah. So when that second... Early about fence three, I think. So when that second fence went, I think it was more watching Oliver know that he had won. He wouldn't be a man that would express, I'd say, much emotion, but he was delighted and you could see more on the fact of how much this horse has done for him in his career and how he really really appreciates that and he understands he says this horse is his horse of a lifetime and everything he's done for him and I think it was a you know he's 16 but he still jumped like he was 10. I actually thought he almost jumped better than when he was 10 if I'm honest <laughs> he, that was the best show jumping around I've seen from Ballamore Glass uh, he jumped beautifully um, and it was Interesting, Oliver in the press conference said that actually quite often because the horse is jumping towards the end of the final day, that he doesn't always get the best of the ground. And that's sometimes where a rail will come from. And actually the ground at Burley was fantastic and it did hold up unbelievably well. And it was very warm and sunny and, and good good going. But I just thought he jumped much better than I, I've seen him. I thought he was he was very, very good. Um, Tim Price. Vitali, I mean, Tim would have known coming into the arena, one pole in hand, actually, you know, the horse has had three down his last three five stars and he he stayed true to the form again, three down. Tim's an incredible, incredible horseman and and it wasn't to be for them this week. But I have to say that dressage test on Friday remains one of my highlights of the entire weekend because that was something quite special. Um, And then to have a horse that can go in and produce an 18 in the dressage and then you know, jump a clear with a few time and, and yes, have a three down, but that's still still a very good performance. And I think that actually it was interesting this weekend because he obviously sets himself out at the start miles ahead of everybody else with his 18, but his cross country, he said Vitaly wasn't taking him like he normally was. He wasn't galloping like he normally was. He felt he had to almost help him around a little bit more. So I think it would be interesting if Vitaly was on his A game on the cross country, because I think those time penalties would have been reduced by a bit. So then that may have given him, you know, he still had three down. I don't think it would have given him that much wiggle room. But I think in the future, if Tim is going to start having dressage tests so low and so far in front of other people and Vitaly's out on his A game cross country, he may start to give himself enough room for three down. Yeah, absolutely. Who knows? I mean, he the horse is obviously very, very capable and, and actually is capable of jumping a clear round as well. I think his technique has improved enormously. Um, it'll be very interesting to see what, where we see him go next and what we'll see him do next. But look, Tim Price, Vitali, class from start to finish just wasn't quite their weekend. And there's no better man than Tim Price, actually, in being so magnanimous in in defeat and and he still had a smile on his face and yes it wasn't the result he wanted and um a bit of salt in the wound was that he actually lost his world number one slot the ne- the next day as well because Ros Cantor is the new FEI eventing world number one which is really really exciting for her and her team um but his day will come again at Burley I'm absolutely sure now before we um pick up a couple of highlights from Burley let's go and hear what Oliver had to say So, Ballamore Class has become on the list of, you know, only three horses you've ever won here twice. He's won three five stars in his career, two of them here. What is it about this place that brings out the best in him? Um, I think his events bring out the best in him and the bigger the better. Um, you know, I think he'd get an awful lot more credit if it wasn't me sitting on him, you know, if it was one of the, the girls that, do lots of social media I think he'd be even more of a superstar but he's with us and um, whatever event in the world it is if it's a big one I just can't wait to get on him. Rosie is there a moment that stands out for you at Burley this week? Um, For me I think it was watching Sam's round was was obviously you know very emotional for for us as a team so I think that was really exciting. any particular moment, Tim Price's dressage test, you're right, was amazing to watch. But I think one person I want to pick up on as having a great five star is Alex Bragg and Quinn Diva. I think it was her first five star completion, but 
the mare just jumped amazing on that last day. She jumped clear. Their dressage, you know, 39.7. It's not their favourite phase, but my gosh, on that final day, didn't she jump? And, you know, her, part of her prep for this was um, she went down to Bicton, I think, to do some British show jumping and ended up qualifying for Hoyes. So She doesn't get a holiday. She's got to go no. to Hoyes. It, she's it quite a show jumper. No pressure being sat on that good a show jumper going into the final day. Top spin's the same, you know, a very, very good show jumper. And you kind of have to pull out the goods, don't you? Um, I'd say one of my highlights then, if, if we're sticking with Alex Bragg, was the dance that he gave to the Burley TV cameras as he came over for his interview, which was very funny. Um, the sport needs good characters and it needs people that, that play up to, to the storylines. And, and yeah, he was fantastic. Um, right, Rosie. I mean, I feel like Burley has just been jam-packed full of so much different content listeners if you missed any of our pre-burly content go go and have a listen there's some really interesting interviews with zara tyndall with andrew nicholson um and I, i think the analysis throughout the weekend as well you always kind of live the story as it happens when you go and listen back to it so go and do it because you've kind of forget and you pick up and you can remember all the different little bits and pieces but a massive thank you has to go to Burley for their support and kind of their, their partnership with us um giving us the freedom to be able to give you this podcast series as well very much appreciated and we're looking forward to hopefully doing it all again in 2024 but Rosie thank you because you have been a massive part of the team this weekend and listeners Uh, Make no mistake, if Rosie was not there beavering away in the background, there would not be nearly the quality and the content of podcasts and and everything that we can bring you. So look, fantastic, fantastic uh, week. And we're looking forward to what might come next. But for now, thank you very much for listening. And it has been a pleasure to live the Burley. But I can't even talk now at the end of Burley listeners. I mean, my voice is my voice on Monday was gone. um, And now I just um, it has been a pleasure, listeners. Riding the Burley roller coaster with you. That's what I was trying to say. Now, listeners, let's talk insurance for just a moment because we all want to make sure that our horses are as well looked after as they possibly can be. And let's be totally honest while we hope that we never need to call upon insurance, with horses, you can never be too sure. And that is why we have teamed up with Argreer because they're the only insurance provider within the UK that offers lifetime equine insurance. And that means that there are no exclusions applied on new conditions that begin once the policy is in place, which means that vet's fees are covered year after year. They stand by their mission to provide the best possible care for horses and all pets as well. And importantly, peace of mind for owners. It's a market they know really well because the company first started in Sweden back in 1890. And Agria have a really tailored approach to keeping things simple and uncomplicated. Which listeners, as I'm sure you can agree, is music to everyone's ears. We all love simple and uncomplicated. So if you'd like to find out more, why don't you go and pay a visit to agriapet.co.uk. Welcome to Fairfax and Favours Quick Fire Questions. Now, today's guest is a Young Rider Gold medalist. She is a five star rider. It is none other than Felicity Collins. Are you ready? I'm ready. What is the best piece of advice that you have ever been given? Don't compare yourself to anyone else. Who is your horse of a lifetime? RSH Contendor, aka Mickey, of course. What Fairfax and Favour boot would you wear to a trot up? Um, I love the heeled Amiras. Um, I've worn them with a dress as well as jeans and I just think they're stunning. I absolutely love the over the knee look. If there is any horse that you could uh, ride today, can be current or past, who would it be? It would always have to be Toledo de Cursa. I am his biggest fan. Felicity Collins, thank you so much for playing along with Fairfax and Favours Quick Fire Questions. Thank you very much.